All right, Paul House, he's that way. We decided after the fishing expedition of all the videos and looking at everything on the weapon mounted lights to do a second one. Hopefully this will be the final chapter. But I want to bring up some points, saw some uh, gaps in the wire, different uh, folks out there, plus the questions that were thrown at us. So let's, let's jump right in. Weapon mounted lights, okay? Actually went to the pro shop and bought a TLR1 and because everybody hyped it up and it's just another weapon light. It's a good light. It's solid, uh, screws on versus clips on. The old light here works well too. And then I have the Surefire on my handgun. The problem, the real problem that I see, every one of them toggles differently. So if you're going to put a weapon mount of light on your gun, and I have no problem with that, get the same light because it's a fine motor skill. And we're going to walk through this and talk about all the different skills you need to use a weapon mounted light. So, all right, justification to point and then push the fight. You know, your LE civilian, does it make sense to, to push? Corey's going to start with a video. I pulled in to the CSAD barracks classroom and did a drive around. The biggest light I have right now is on my truck. It's the headlights. So I come around, I look, I see, and I have to make decisions. I have decision points. So I look for, is the building open, closed, lit, are my security lights, and then human form. So I'm looking, I see, and I have to make a decision. Do I hold, push, or retreat, fall back? And that's, again, is a civilian versus law enforcement. Do I make contact? Again, I look at the doors, the entrance points on those doors. Are they open, closed? And again, I want to make decisions. Is it, do I need to push? Okay. So we look at all that. Headlights help me do that. And then my handheld lights. Again, I don't, uh, if I have students in, I probably don't want to point uh, a weapon mount of light at students to figure out who they are, or what they're doing, or maybe they're doing uh, CrossFit this early in the morning. I don't know. So we have to figure out what to use, when to use it. Now, the different shooting positions, and we, we go into all these here in our low light classes. So handheld lights, we have a left hand barricade, we have a right hand barricade. So pretty easy. Now, the weapon is out here searching or over here. Those are the two positions we use, right hand barricade. Now, the weapon out, we have justification to pull the weapon out. Another. We can search this way or search this way with the weapon in a holster. It could be concealed carrier or as law enforcement, an open carry. So there's two more positions. Now, let's go into, Koi will splash up the acorn video. If you're not going to use your handheld and you can put two hands on your weapon, so I'm over here, I decide to shoot. I'm sparkling, I see a problem. I'm going to go ahead, drop this, come up with light, and gun, and then what I have to do is figure out, am I going to activate this light on my draw stroke and push out? That's a fine motor skill. So these are things you need to think about and practice, and it can work on this side as well. So I drop the light, I come back to gun, and then do I work the light or not, or just engage the threat? So we start talking here. We have six different positions that you can work. For, for those of you folks that practice. Now, we're going to add in some things here. We're going to add in room pies because we pie rooms, not all small rooms. I watched some of the videos out there. We're going to do 11 yard shots minimum uh, inside from hallways into rooms. And we've got to look at some things. We're going to talk about the floor, the umbrella, T intersections, distance and overhead. Somebody made a comment, uh, bringing the light over my head like this. Well, the reason we do that is because we do 60 yard shots at night and that it was the best way to see your iron sights. Now we throw another variable in the mix, which is red dot sights. Are you shooting with your red dots at night or just irons or both? Again, you need to think about that. All right, we're gonna start putting you into some scenarios and I want you to see what I see. And then I want you to see what you look like from downrange as well. Hold on, I'll be right back with you. All right, we're outside. The classroom door, everything's dark. We've got a little ambient light. The sun's coming up through the skylights. But the room is dark to my eye. I cannot see human form right now. 
So I'm using a handheld light. So what I'll do, it's the uh, Phoenix PD-35. I can hit, I can articulate all the weapons and the props on that person on the wall, our meth head, and then I can move to this human form here. I can see what looks like a handgun or partial handgun in his right hand. All right, 11 yards outside the classroom, and now we have a weapon light, Surefire X300. I'm going to splash floor. I pick up the meth head target, but I cannot articulate all the props unless I stare at it for a long time. Same thing on the human form. I see a hand, but I cannot see articulate weapon. Now let's take it back. Let's do that ceiling umbrella people talk about. So I'm sparkling. Again, now I'm starting to see a little bit better, but it's like 50% whether I make a shot. Will I shoot at 50% of knowing whether it's a weapon or not? No. Same thing on the person. Right now, it's too dark in his right hand. I cannot see. All right, 11 yards outside the classroom. Cannot see human form, naked eye. And I've got the TLR1 light. So I'm splashing the ground and cannot articulate the weapons on the meth head. And then again, I can't articulate the pistol on the, the dummy. So I'm going to go up to ceiling, try that. All right, a little bit better on the weapons, on the meth head, still on the human being with the Glock 43X. Uh, I cannot articulate it. It's a weapon. For 100% articulation, I have to point the weapon light at A, the meth head, or B, the human type dummy there. All right, I move to seven to eight yards. And what we're going to do is a floor splash. And I, I have to walk up the light on the floor to actually see the weapons on the meth head target or walk it up to see what I think is a weapon, but I'm not sure. Then again, I can go ceiling, sparkle. That gives me a little bit more illumination, but again, have to be in there at seven to eight yards on the the person, the dummy, again, I cannot see and articulate it's a weapon. I want to move even closer. So when I get to, I want to say this is about five yards. All right, good illumination there on the ceiling. Not bad on the dummy, but what happens is I can't articulate. It's really the back of a, a gun right now. If I go to floor, again, good splash on the meth head, better on the the handheld but to actually get a good articulation weapon has to be pointed all right so what we did now is we put a camera down range and what we're going to do is i want you to see from either sewer position or the low ready which law enforcement uses or the umbrella position what you look like so we're on there's there is sewell there is a low ready. There is high ready right there. So again, return fire, center mass. Think about it. All right, now what we have is handheld. And again, different angles and off center line of your body. All right. So what we have is, if I'm going to pie, this would be a left-hand barricade, light off my body. I can go anywhere L-shaped here. And what I can do is it gets the light off center line while I'm pieing. And again, I can have weapon out, weapon in the holster when I do this. So what I'm doing is using this right here is hard cover for my body or a soft cover, whichever you want to call it. And this seems to help, again, protect you a little bit more than being out with a full light. And what does a full light mean? If I'm doing gun light, full light, or here, again, it gives you a good center mass. I'm exposing a little bit more of my body. Just something to think about. All right, let's do a wrap up on our weapon mounted lights too. First point, the, the stream light, TLR1, great light. The only negative, and it's not really a negative, it does not fit in this holster. So it'll fit, but I've got to just ram it in. So 
the light folks don't talk to the holster folks a lot of times. So that's the only issue I have. It might go on a rifle right now. Next, anytime you do low light, you should be doing it in the daytime. Practice it dry, practice it uh, live. So we do our low light classes in the winter. And what happens is we take you all your daytime tactics with a flashlight in the day. I mean, pie in rooms, T intersections, outside contact, you know, the fire maneuver drills. And then what we do is we take you at night, same modules. So we practice daytime, nighttime. You need to do the same thing. Had a uh, police officer come to one of our low light courses, but on nights for like three years, never shot at night. So that's unacceptable, especially in the LEO community. Uh, for the LEOs out there, you never hear about the, uh, the good departments because they're not making the news. It's just a lot of times the problematic departments and not good training programs. So again, you have to train, whether you LEO, civilian, put your mileage in, dry fire and live fire. So hope this video helps, clarifies some of the points. You take care, be safe, and appreciate you guys watching this site. Hi, right, Paul Howe, CSAT Way. I want to thank you folks for watching all our channels. So we have the YouTube. We have free content on the CSAT Way Facebook. If you want precision shooting techniques, go to the Patreon, CSAT Patreon site. For training, we have dedicated. We have private training. We have regularly scheduled classes. So you just let us know what you're interested in, and we can help you out. We look forward to seeing you folks on the range. You take care. Be safe.